Chick Shrub. It's almost like an S sound. Yeah. Okay. Chick Shrub, maybe. By T.C. Boyle. My daughter is walking along the road side late at night, too late. Really, for a 17 year old to be out alone, even in a town as safe as this. As it is raining, the first rain of the season, the streets slick with fine uh, immiscible imis glaze of water and petrochemicals, so that even a driver in full possession of her facilities, a driver who hadn't consumed two, two apples, martinis, and three glasses of hitching post points, nor a before she, she get behind the wheel of her car, would have trouble keeping the time out of the gutters and the shrubbery off the sidewalk and the highway median for the Christ's sake. But that's not really what I want to talk about, or not yet anyway. Okay, and then the questions? Mm. Oh, can you not see that? The next part, Ken? Ah, right, just here. Imis, ah, sorry, immiscible. What is immiscible? Okay. Immiscible, it's like unmixable, not mixed. Okay. Like oil and water. Exactly. So okay. the glaze of oil, petrochemicals, and water. Mm -hmm. Um, this is Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Pinot, uh, Pinot no. Pinot Pino. no. no. Pinot Pino Noir. Noir. And what is it? It's a type of wine. No. Okay, wine. It's like Pinot Grigio, Pinot Noir, um, mm -hmm. Merlot, Cabernet. They're all different types of wine. Before she okay. got... Can you repeat got? Got. Uh, gout. Good. And hmm, this next one's pretty long. And so, yeah, just Ken, can you read this question? Have you heard of uh, Tunguska in Russia? Tunguska in Russia. And let's have Judith, are you there? Okay, I still can't hear you, so maybe we'll come back. Heidi, can you read the next part? This was the site of the last known large body impact on the Earth's surface nearly a hundred years ago. Was that not strictly accurate? The uh, meteor, which was an estimated uh, 60 years across, uh, ne uh, never actually touched down. The force of the uh, it in, uh, entry okay. the force of its entry, the compression and the superheating of the air beneath it, it uh, caused it to explode some 25,000 feet above the ground. But then the term explode hardly does justice to the to the event. There was a, a detonation a flash, a thunder clap, clap with the mm, com combustive power okay. of 800 Hiroshima bombs. 30 uh, miles away, uh, ra reindeer in their uh, roofing huts were struck dead by the blast wave. And the cross of the uh, hunter across 30 miles beyond that burst into flame even as he was uh, polyxed to the ground. 700 square miles of Siberian, Siberian forest were leveled in an in instant. If the meteor, meteor had struck just five hours later, it would have exploded over St. Peter, Peterburg 
and annihilated, annihilated even uh, living this, I think, in this glorious uh, Baroque city. Baroque city. Good. Um, annihilated. Annihilated. Annihilated every living thing in that glorious Baroque city. Can you repeat that last sentence? Annihilated every living thing in that Annihil glorious. Annihilated, annihilated every every living thing in that glorious Baroque city. Good. Uh, the meteor. Mm -hmm. Meteor. 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 Media. Good. Polaxed. Uh, Polaxed. Uh, Polaxed. Yeah, it's like he was thrown to the ground. Um, it, if you're Polaxed, it's like you're hit with a... Uh, it's an axe on a pole, like literally. Uh, okay. so you've got like this large pole, and then you've got maybe like a, what looks mm -hmm. like an axe. I don't know, that's terrible drawing. But that would be like a pole axe, I don't know, something like that. Uh, compression. 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 Good. Okay. And questions here? Okay. Uh, does anybody have any com questions here? What does it mean compression? Compression is when something gets tighter or like tighter together. So if you're pressing on something, you're compressing it. Um, so yeah, if it is possible, uh, could you link uh, this article on Google Chat or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can definitely do that. Um, I'm gonna just. Um, oh, there it is. Oh man. Um, hold on, while I do that, let's have, okay, and let's have, where were we, Ksenia, can you read the next part? Yes, but can you do it a little bigger? Yeah. If you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this was only a rock and it was only 60 yards across. My point? You'd better get down on your knees and pray to your gods, because each year this big spinning globe we ride intersects the orbits of some 20 million asteroids, at least a thousand of which are more than half a mile in diameter. Mm. But my daughter, she's out there, there in the dark and the rain walking home, Marine and I bought her car, a Honda Civic, the seventh thing in four on four wheels. But the car was used, pre-owned in dealer's peak, and as it happens, it's in the shop with transmission problems, and because she just had to see her friends and gossip and giggle and balance sleek, multicolored clumps of raw fish and pickled ginger, on conjoined chopsticks at the mall. Kimberly picked her up and Kimberly didn't bring her home. Okay, good. Uh, questions here? Can you repeat diameter? Diameter. Okay. And so, yeah, we've got two kind of stories. We're talking about asteroids, meteors, and his daughter walking home in the dark. The first paragraph, there was the daughter, um, and there's also the person who'd been drinking, um, and it's raining. Uh, yeah, and that's good. Uh, Mustafa, welcome to class. How's it going? Uh, it's good. I'm good. Nice. Okay. And Mustafa, can you read the next part? Yes. From where? Uh, from Maddie. Right here. Yeah, okay. Maddie, Maddie has a cell phone, and uh, theoretically, she could have called us, but she didn't, or that's how it appears. 
Uh, and so she's walking in the rain. And Alice K. Bertram, Bertram uh, of sixty of sixteen uh, Breer Land, white diverse diverse relators with hybris Hybron uh, who has picked at a salad and left her glass glasses on the board loses control of her bike vehicle. Uh, it is just past midnight. Uh, I am in bed with a book. Uh, naked and hardly able to focus on the clustered, uh, w clustered word and rigged uh, descend descending the paragraph because uh, Maureen, Maureen uh, is in the bathroom uh, slipping into the sheer black uh, negligi. I bought uh, her uh, Victoria, a victorious sick secret for her first day and her every sound the creak of the medicine uh, cabinet, cabinet uh, of its uh, hing, uh, hings the tab running the the, uh, the accessories of the brush at her teeth electrifies me he, he, okay. here, uh, stop here so we're good here um, okay let's look at theoretically 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 uh, Peterman uh, Betterman Peterman 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 at Briar Briar a realtor a realtor Realtor with Hi Hyperion. 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 That's not too important. Uh, her vehicle. Vehicle. Naked. Naked. Uh, rigid. But here we pronounce da uh, ta uh, because we have uh, ka. Naked. Naked. Why we pronounce da here? Why do we pronounce uh, what? Da. Uh, As we know that uh, if we have ka before da, we flip uh, the, the D to T. No. Um, maybe in British English, but not in, uh, we would say naked. Naked. For sure. Naked. So it would be a D sound. Um, yeah. If you're saying like something like nicked, that would be T, nicked. Um, so, like, I, I got nicked. Nick. But naked is different. Um, okay. Uh, rigid? <coughs> Can you repeat rigid? Uh, rig rigid? Rigid. 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 Descending. Descending. Nice. Descending. And a negligee? Neg negligee? Yeah, negligee. What does it mean negligee? It's a type of like nightgown, um, and it's really thin. Um, it's like yeah, it's just a thin nightgown, something where you wear to sleep. Um, the sasaris. Okay, uh, sasaris. Um, electrifies. Electrifies. And cabinet. Cabinet. Okay. Um, all right. So this is a little bit tricky. Questions here. Okay. Um, one thing I guess, sasaris is not really common. It's just, it's used. It's like the sound of the brush um, on your teeth. It's like kind of like a whispering sound. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Ken, uh, can you read from here? Okay. I have a lit candle and I'm waiting for Maureen to stop into the room so that I can flick off the light. We had cocktails earlier and a bottle of wine with dinner. 
and we set cloths on the couch and shared a joint in front of the fire. Because our daughter was out of and we could do that with no one the wiser. I listened to the little sounds from the bathroom, the seductive sounds, meddling. I'm ready, more than ready. Hey, I call Kitty my voice low. Are you coming or not? You don't expect me to wait all night, do you? Her face appears in the doorways, doorway. The pale lobes of her breast and the dark nipples visible through the clinging black silk. Oh, are you waiting for me? She says, making a game of it. She hovers at the door, and I can see the smile creep across her lips. The pleasure of the moment, drawing it out, because I thought I might go down and work in the garden for a while. It won't take long, a, long, a couple hours, maybe. You know, spread a little manure, bank up some of the mulch on the roses. You'll wait for me, won't you? Uh, the phone rings. Sorry, good. Uh, let's look at hovers. Can you repeat hovers? Uh, hovers. Good. Okay. And other than that, you did a nice job. Um, bank up some of the mulch on the roses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he and his wife have like have had a couple of drinks, um, and you know they're kind of about to have a romantic moment. We've also got the comet that he keeps talking about and his daughter who is walking home in the rain. Um, Judith, are you there? All right, maybe not. Heidi, can yes. you read the next part? Oh, Judith, nice. Welcome to class. Can you stare with the we stare? We stare blankly at each other through the frisk the first two rings and after then um, and then Maureen says I'd better get it and I say no no forget it it's nothing it's nobody but she's already moving forget it I should it I shout and uh, her voice drifts back to me what if it's Maddie then I watch her put her lips to the receiver and whispered, Hello, the night of the Tungushka explosion, the skies were unnaturally bright across the Europe. As far away as London people strolled in the parks past midnight and read novels out of doors while the sheep kept right on gazing and the birds steered uneasily in the trees. There were no stars visible, no moon, just a pale, quivering light as if all the color had been leached out of the sky. Good. But, oh, sorry. No, don't be sorry at all. That was really good. Um, the birds stirred. The birds stirred. Red novels. No, red novels. Okay. Um, again, the Tunguska explosion was in Russia, in Siberia, just a meteor. Um, and so the wife answers the phone, kind of interrupts the moment. Um, Heidi, can you read the next part? Mm. Uh, uh, but of course, uh, that midnight grow and uh, a fate of those unhappy Siberian reindeer were nothing at all compared to what would have uh, happened if a larger object had invaded the Earth's atmosphere. On average, objects greater than 100 years in diameter strike the planet once uh, every 5,000 years. And the uh, asteroids a half a mile across thunder down and in intervals of the 300,000 years. 300,000 years is a long time in anybody's book. But if when uh, such a 
collision occurred, the explosion will be in the million uh, mag uh, megaton range and will clog the atmosphere in dust, thrusting the uh, entire planet into the deep froze, freeze and uh, uh, effectively uh, stifling all planet growth, uh, all plant all plant growth for a period of a year or more. There will be no crops, no forage, no sun. Good. Uh, no forage. No forage, no sun. Yeah, so forage is like if you're just going around and looking for food to eat, you're kind of like foraging. Um, so it's just like searching for any sort of food, um, like nuts or plants or anything. Um, all plant. Um, yeah, all plant growth and then stifling. Uh, stifling. Good. Um, yards. Yard. Yeah, yards instead of yards, um, and then reindeer. Can you repeat reindeer? Reindeer. Yeah, reindeer. Okay. Questions here? Stifling. Stifling is like choking. So if you stifle something, you're kind of suffocating it or killing it by suffocating it. Um, so yeah, it'll just stop all plant growth. Um, okay. And Ksenia, uh, can you read the next part? Uh, there has been an accident. That is what the voice of the other and the line is telling why, why, my wife. And the victim is Madeline Bean. In, in uh, 1337 Laurel Drive, according to their ID, the paramedics found in her purse. The purse with a silver clasp that has been driven half an inch into the flesh under her arm by the force of the impact is a little thing now bigger than a hand cover book with a ribbon thin starp. The same purse all the girls carry, as if it were part of a uniform. Is this her parent or guardian speaking? I hear my wife say, This is her mother, and then the bottom dropping out out of her voice. Is she? Good. Okay. And that sounded great. So again, Madeline is their daughter. Um, and so there's been an accident, um, the paramedics. Does anybody have any questions here? Paramedics, it's when uh, the body is no longer alive, yes? Oh, ambulance workers. Ah, it's not for the corpse only. It's uh, for alive people also, paramedics. Yeah, paramedics are the people who work in an ambulance. Um, mm -hmm. So most of the time they deal with people who are alive. Um, but sometimes, obviously, yeah, they're dead people. Um, okay, and I think we're good. Any other questions? Okay, and let's have Mustafa. Can you read from Is She? Okay. They don't answer. They don't answer such questions. Don't volunteer information. Not over the phone. The next ten seconds are th uh, thunder, thunderous. Cat, cats, 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 My wife standing there. Uh, my my wife standing there uh, nimbly with the phone in her in her hand. As if it were uh, it were some uh, some unidentifiable object she she had found in the street while I fumble out of bed uh, to search for my pants and my shoes. Uh, where are my shoes? The the car keys, uh, my wallet. This is the true uh, panic, the lose uh, of uh, faith and control. The punch, or the punch to the heart, and the struggle for breath. I say the only thing I can think so to say 
just to hear my own voice, just to get things uh, straight. She was in in an accident. Uh, is that what they said? Good. Let's look at cataclysmic. Cat. Cataclysmic. Yeah, cataclysmic. Numbly. Cataclysmic. Norm. Numbly. Numbly. No be numbly. No be numbly. Good. Loss numbly. of faith. Loss. Loss. And. Loss. Loss. Yeah. Okay. Good. Any questions with this? Okay. Thanks. Okay. And do, no, nobody has any questions other than that. And fumble out. Um. So like clumsily get out. So if you fumble something, it's like you don't have control of it, you don't do it smoothly. So if he's fumbling out of bed, he like does it without any smoothness. He's like kind of panicked, he's not doing things well or cleanly. Um, so he kind of like bounces out of bed um, poorly. Uh, any other questions? Okay. And let's have uh, Patricia, can you read the next part? Okay, here, yeah, she was, she was hit by a car. She's, they don't know, in surgery. What hospital? Did they say what hospital? My wife is in motion now. Uh, sorry, my wife is in motion now too. The mm, negligee, negligee, ridiculous, unequal to the task. And she jerks it over her head and flings it to the floor even as she snatches up a blouse, shorts, flip-flops, anything, anything to cover her nakedness and get her out the door. The dog is whining in the kitchen. There is a sound of rain on the roof, intensive fire, hammering at the gutters. I don't bother with shoes. There are no sh shoes. Shoes do not exist. And my shirt hangs limply from my shoulders. Miss Button, sagging, Tails hanging loose, and we're in the car now. And the driver's side wipe, and the driver's side wiper, is beating out of sync, and the night closing on us like a fist. Good. Oh. Miss buttoned. Miss buttoned. Miss buttoned. And <laughs> excuse me, gutters, gutters. Okay, okay, good, good. And the negligee. Negligee. Yeah, negligee. Sagging is like drooping, something that is down too far low. So, um, yeah, if it's it's sagging past his waist, it like kind of drops too low. Um, so if you're really tired, sometimes your eyes sag, Ken. Um, and... Let's look at... Ken, can you read the next paragraph, next part? And then there's a chick... Uh, chick... Uh, uh, 65 million, million years ago, an asteroid or perhaps a comet, no one is quite certain, uh, collided with the Earth on what is now the Yucatan Peninsula. Judging from the impact crater, which is 120 miles wide, the object, this big flaming ball, was some uh, six miles across. When it came, when it came down, day became and became night, and that night extended so far into the future that at least 75 percent of all known species were extinguished, including dinosaurs in nearly all their forms and uh, array and some 90% of the ocean's plankton, which in turn devastated the uh, pelagic food chain. How fast was it traveling? The nearest estimate put it at 54,000 miles an hour, more than 60 times the speed of a bullet. Ast uh, astrophysicists call such objects civilization enders and calculate the chance that the disaster of this uh, magnitude will occur during any individual's lifetime, rarely one in 10,000. 
the same odds as dying in an auto accident in the next six months. Or more tellingly, living to be a hundred the company of your spouse. Okay, good. Um, and let's look at devastated. Mm -hmm. uh, devastated. Devastated. Array. Uh, array. Collided. Collided. Good. Um, pelagic is just having to do with the ocean or the sea. Um, yeah. And that was good. Really well done. And array is like a a variety. So if you have a wide array of food at the party, you have lots of different types of food. So an array is just a variety. Um, any other questions here? Okay. And so again, we've got kind of two stories. The story of the, the husband and wife um, and the daughter who's in the hospital after being hit by a car and these comments. Um, and Juliette, can you read the next part? All I see is windows, an endless grid of lit windows climbing one above the other into the night as the car shoots into the emer emergency vehicles only lane and slides in hard against against the curb. Both doors fling open sim simultaneously. Maureen is already out of the sidewalk, already slamming the door behind her and uh, breaking into a trot. And I'm right on her heels, the keys still in the ignition and the lights stabbing at the pale underbelly of a jag part ambulance and they can have it, the car anybody can have it and keep it forever it, if they'll just tell me that my daughter is alright just tell me I matter out of breath just tell me and it's yours and this is a prayer the first in a long discontinuous string addressed to whoever or whatever may be listening nicely done uh, simultaneously. Simultaneously. And climbing. 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 Oh, climbing. Good. Uh, nice job with discontinuous as well. Uh, and any other questions here? A trot is like a fast walk, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. Like a horse. Yeah, like a horse. Um, just a fast walk. And all right, good. Uh, let's go. And let's have Heidi. Can you read the next part? Overhead, the sky is having a scissors. Black above, a quick silver glow. The rain coming down in the window bone arcs, arcs, and I wouldn't even notice, but for the fact that we are suddenly instantly wet, our hair uh, nodded and uh, clinging and over clothes stuck uh, like uh, f flip fly paper to the slick uh, tidbit of our skin. In we, in we come, it's okay, in we come side by side through the door that uh, jolts back from us in the room. And all I, c I can think is that the hostel, hostel is a death factory and that we have come to it like the walking dead, a ha haggard, sorrow, shoeless. My daughter, I say to the nurse at the admittance uh, desk, she they, she is they called, you called, uh, she's been in an accident. Let me do this next part, too. Marianne is at, uh, at my side. 
tugging at the fingers of one hand as if she were trying to remove an invisible globe. A car, a car accident. Yeah. Just this part, uh, she's, they called, uh, you called, she's been in an accident. No, just this like pause. Um, he doesn't know what to say. Um, shoeless. Shoeless. Hello. 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 Huh? Haggard. 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 Hospital. Hospital. And um, what is this tegument? I've never heard this word before. It's like a covering or a vest, like just a yeah, covering, like clothes. Um, but yeah, it could be the covering of your skin. Um, haggard is like really tired and like just like really, I don't know, like worn out almost. If you like look kind of crazy, like homeless people look haggard. Um, sallow again is really similar. Like you're kind of your eyes are drooping. You're kind of yellowish. It's like this not very well. Tugging is like pulling at. And so she's like pulling at his hand, pulling at his fingers. Um, so they're just in bad shape, and they're asking at the doctor, and it's raining really hard. And let's have... Ksenia, can you read the next part? Name? The nurse asks about this nurse. She's young, Filipina, with uh, epicky eyes and the bone structure of a cadaver. Every day she sees death and it blinds her. She doesn't see us. She sees a computer screen. She sees the TV monitor mounted in the corner and the, and the shadows that pass there. She sees the world, the floor, the naked light of the fluorescent tube, but not us, not us. For one resounding moment, that sounds in my ears and then sounds again. I can't remember my daughter my daughter's name. I can't picture her link into the mound of textbooks spread out on the dining room table, the glow of the overhead light making a nimbus of the hair, and she glances up at me with a glum look and half of rueful smile as it if to say it's all in a day's work for a teenager dead and you are like you are not in high school anymore but her name is gone Mary my wife says Madeline Bean Sorry, 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 sorry. Rufal is like sad, but not really sad, kind of like regretful. Um, yeah, regretful is a good, just close synonym. Um, when we say resounding, it's almost with a Z, resounding. Uh, resounding. One resounding moment. Uh, I can. I can picture her and her hair. I think you said da, and you said can't. Not really important, but good. Um, any other questions here? Okay. And let's have uh, Patricia. Can you read the next part? Um, wait, I got lost here now. Where is it? Uh, oh. I watch mem mesmerized as the nurse's fleshless fingers maneuver the mouse. Her eyes locked on the screen before her. A click, another click. The eyes lift to us. In, even as they dodge away again. She's still in surgery, she says. Where is it, I demand. What room? Where do, where do we go? Maureen's voice cuts in them. Elemental, chilling, and it's not a question she's posing. Not a statement or demand, but a plea. What's wrong with her? Another click, but this one is just for show. And the, eye, and the eyes never more from the screen. There was an accident, the nurse says. She was brought in by the paramedics. That's all I can tell you. Okay. Questions here? Okay. 
And Ken, can you read the next part? Uh, from from uh, where? Sorry, it, it is. It is that I became aware that we are not alone. That there are others milling around the room, other zombies like us, hurriedly dressed and streaming water till the beige carpet is black with it. And why? I wonder. Do I despise? this nurse more than any human being I've never encountered this young woman not much older than my daughter with her hair pulled back in a bum and white cap like a party favored or torched atop, atop it who is just doing her job why do I want it to want to reach across the counter that separates as and awaken her to a swift, sure knowledge of hate and fear and pain. Why? Good. Really nice reading. Um, others milling. What? what? Okay. Uh, milling. Milling. Uh, milling. 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 Ah, uh, milling. Good. Milling is like walking around, kind of just mm. like useful uselessly just like yeah walking around kind of bumping into each other milling around uh, any other questions uh, what 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 does italic, italic part mean what does what mean italic part who is just doing her job so why do i despise her more than any being i've ever encountered it's like this woman who's just doing her job it's this young woman who's not much older than her my daughter with her hair pulled back in a bun who's just doing her job. Like, this woman who's just doing her job, why do I hate her? And so this is just like, he's kind of emphasizing it to himself. Like, this woman who's just doing her job, like, why do I hate her? Um, mm. Does that make sense? No, maybe Italic can be used to reinforcing the meaning of the nuance. Yeah, it's just like okay. emphasizing it. Yeah, okay. exactly. Um, all right, Julieta, can you read the next part? Yes. Ted, Maureen says, and I feel hair grip at my elbow, and then we are moving again, hurrying, sweeping, practically running out of the, this place, down a corridor under the glare of the lights that are a kind of death in themselves, and into a worse place, a far worse place. The thing that... Mm, Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that disturbs me about uh, Chicxulub, aside from the fact that it erased the, the dinosaurs and uh, wrote catastrophic and irreversible change, is the deeper implication that we and all our works and worries and attachments are so utterly unconsequential. Death cancels our individually. We know that. Yes, but ontogeny <laughs> recapitulates phylogeny and the kind goes on. Human life and culture succeed us. That is the absence of God, is what allows us to accept that death or of the individual. But when you throw chicks club into the mix or the next Next, Chicks Club, I don't know, the Chicks Club that could yeah. come howling down the obliterate, to obliterate all and everything, even as young eyes skim the lines of this page, where does that leave us? Where nice. does that leave me? Because I don't, <laughs> didn't understand. Okay. Okay, so... Um, Irreversible. Irreversible. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Inconsequential. Inconsequential. Um, individuality. Uh -huh. In individuality. And ont ontogeny re recapitulates phylogeny. 
ontogeny recapitulates philology. Philogeny. Yeah. Um, so this is tricky. Mm. This is like ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. Um, so like the growth of the human in itself, like as a being in yourself, is like a mirror for evolutionary growth, which is kind of disproved, but it's kind of like the point of living is that you're like ex Extending the species, you're like a section of human life. And so that's kind of what he's going at. He's like, the meaning of life is not that you have an individuality, but that you are like part of the life of the race in some, <laughs> in some sense. Um, so he's saying, like, death cancels our individuality, and human life goes on. We're like all part of culture. But then if you throw these, like, asteroids in the mix, and that just, like, ends everything. That's, like, the death of the species, and then it doesn't matter at all. Like, nothing matters, kind of. And so, hopefully that makes sense. Do you guys kind of understand that? Unreadable. <laughs> um, but, like, does the explanation at least make sense, to some extent? Can I... Can can you tell me what does the Chicks Club that could come howling down? Chicks Club is this, it's the like asteroid or comet that hit mm -hmm. Earth and wiped out the dinosaurs. It was like the thing that caused the dinosaurs to become extinct. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. What's um, the name? I was asking the last sentence. Oh. Um, so it's like the next asteroid that might come howling. So like howling, it's like whistling, it's speeding, it's coming down really quickly to kill everything. Even like right now, it could be happening. You know, where does that leave us? Like what's the meaning of everything if there's this thing that could just like wipe us out in an instant? Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So this is a little bit tricky, but... Again, he's like there are these parallel stories of his daughter in the hospital and these like species ending events. Hopefully that makes sense. Heidi, I think it's you. Can you read the next part? Uh, you are parents. We are you are in, the parents. Uh, you are the parents. Good. Uh, we are in another room, going deeper now. The loudspeakers murmuring their eternal incantations. Dr. Chandra Sam Foma, or to emergency. Dr. Bell, patching Dr. Bell. And here is another nurse, Grimmer, older, with lip lines like the uh, string of the tobacco pouch, put tight uh, around her lips. She's addressing us. Uh, me and my wife, but I have nothing to say, either in denial or affirm affirmation, if I pray muddy as my own, and I'm making deals again, then I'm sure to jinx her, because those powers uh, that, might, uh, that might or might not be, These, uh, those gods of the uh, in infinite, and the minute we'll see how desperately I love her, and they'll take her her way just to spite me for refusing to believe in them. Voodoo, voodoo, uh, Santeria, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I hear Maureen's Mar voice. Ima uh, imagine from a Locked vault, vault, the single whispered uh, monosyllable, and then is she going to be all right? Good. Uh, the infinite, the infinite, the uh, the infinite, and the minute, and minute, minute, uh, minute. Good. Um, denial. Denial. Okay. Um, and then paging. Paging. Good. 
And so this is something, I don't know if you guys also do it. So what he's doing, he's like making up these things, like these rules that will make her all right. So if he claims his daughter, so like they ask, you're the parents? And so if he says yes, he's like, the gods are going to take her away from us. So I'll jinx her. It'll be like a curse. So if I say yes, it'll curse her, and they'll take her away from me, so I can't say yes. And so it's like you're kind of making up these rules because you're so helpless to like make something okay. Um, it's just it's kind of irrational, but that's kind of what he's doing. And then his wife says, yes, we are the parents, and is she going to be okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions? I have a question about why min minute and minute. not minute. Minute, yes. Why minute? Minute is very small. It's it's the same spelling. A minute is different. So a minute is part of an hour. It's like a small part of an hour. So they come from the same, obviously, the same root. Um, they just kind of mean different things. A minute is a part of time, and minute is very small. It's Makes size. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And, okay. Um, all right. Ksenia, can you read the next part? I don't have that information, the nurse says, and her voice is natural, Robert again. This is not her daughter. His, her daughter is at home, asleep in a pile of teddy bears, pink sheets, fluffy pillows, and nightline glowing like the all thing eye of Sentinel. I can't help myself. It's that naturality, naturality uh, that maddening clinical naturality, and can't anybody take any responsibility for anything? That information do you have? What information do you have? I say, and maybe I'm too loud. Maybe I am. Uh, isn't that your job, for Christ's sake, to know what's going on here? You call us up in the middle of the night. Our daughter's hurt. She's been in in an accident, and you tell me you don't have any think information. Good. Um, what information do you have? What information do you have? Neutrality. Neutrality. Ne neutrality. Good. Um, her voice is neutral. Neutral. Um, and, okay, so I've got a question. Do you guys want to finish this in the next class? Maybe we could change the next class and just try to finish this. Um, what do you guys think? Because we are really close to outer time. So it's up to you guys if you want to come into the next class and finish the story, or I can just send you the link and you can finish it on your own. Um, I know the next class is something that you probably all have done before. Any ideas? Thank you. Bye. Okay. Um. Do you? Um, what about you guys? Any of you have any thoughts about the next class? If you guys are going to come in, if you're not, if you want to finish this, if you don't. I just finished by myself because it's time for me to go to bed. Thank okay. you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess we can talk about it in the next <laughs> class. <then. laughs> See you guys. Okay. What was that? Okay, okay. <laughs>